Going up to the Pan Boshe Monastery is something we've always wanted to do. It's 14,000 feet up into these mountains, the home of the famous Yeti Hand and Scalp. As legend tells it, the monks have had these for hundreds of years. These relics are as important to the Yeti legend as the Patterson-Gimlin film is to the Bigfoot legend in North America. There it is. Pangboche. It's pretty exciting to finally see some physical evidence of what's believed to be a Yeti. Namaste. Namaste. The rumor is back in the 1950s, Peter Byrne smuggled one of the fingers to England for testing, but it turned out to be human. I'm curious what the monks have to say about that. We have a head lama of this monastery, and he is going to tell about the Yeti story and the proof as well. This is quite an honor for us. Yes, please thank him for us. <laughs> Oh, wow. Oh, I remember. Well, we can tell it was a male because it's got male pattern baldness. <laughs> From those movies, documentaries in the 70s, I remember yeah. seeing these, both of these things. It was in several books, too. Yeah. yeah. Kind of demystified the subject for people outside the country because then there was some physical evidence showing that they existed and that they were flesh and blood creatures. To see something that we've been seeing since we were children is in books and in movies is, is a powerful thing for us. In 2011, what was supposed to be the original finger was tested by the Royal College of Surgeons, and it came back as human. Mm -hmm. Do they believe that the Yeti is a real animal, flesh and blood? <laughs> We have similar beliefs. When I asked the monk how he felt, he held to their beliefs that they believed this was from a Yeti. It seems there's always an answer, and yet they can't provide real evidence. It's so big. Yeah. How could that be human? When you look at how small the Nepalese people are, look how big that hand is. There's no question in my mind we're not looking at a human hand here. I mean, I put my hand up next to it, it's twice as big as my hand, and I'm twice as big as almost all the Nepalese people. It's from a Yeti, period. We would like to encounter a Yeti. Where should we look, and what should we do? Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. We sure appreciate it. Yeah, That's at the Arun Valley. Yep. Yeah. The Lama told us to go to the Erun Valley, which says it's not too far from the Pengboche Monastery. We're going to hike there with the help of Sherpas carrying our gear. Get their Sherpas on. We're going to set up camp on the edge of the Erun Valley, and tonight we're going to do our first nighttime exploration to try to encounter a Yeti. This is our first night investigation in Nepal, and you know, it looks so similar to places we've been before, but it's not. We've never been out at night in any place like this, so I'm not exactly sure what to expect. All we can do is go in with the same bag of tricks we use in North America and hope that Yetis respond in the same way. According to the literature, yeah, they make some noise, but we know almost nothing about what they actually do. And at the same time, as far as we know, nobody's tried any of these techniques, let alone at night. No, I think that, that's gonna be obvious here, I think. All these Yetis will be virgins, period. Not for long, not with the bubs here. I wanna be vocalizing a lot. All right, Renee, you want to team up first night in the Himalayas? Yeah, I like that. I plan. Let's head that way. That's where I want to go. Matt, you and I. Absolutely. We'll go the other direction. We'll be in touch. All right. Stay on the radio. 
So we're gonna split off into two teams. Matt and I are gonna take one ridge, Renee and Bobo are gonna take the other. We're gonna see if the North American Bigfoot calls that we usually do will elicit a response from the Himalayan Yeti. We don't know, but it's definitely worth a try. Oh, nice. Check this out, Bobs. Prayer wall. Beautiful. Want me to read it for you? <laughs> yeah. You know Sanskrit? I'm brushing up a little bit. I don't know what the hell that says. That's awesome, though. Raiders of the Lost Ark or something. This might be a good luck spot to do some calls right here. Yeah. In front Jump of the up there. prayer wall. Matt. Yeah, what's up? We hiked up, we're at this really killer little landing spot in front of a prayer wall. It just seems like a perfect place to wing in a prayer, a squatch call for a Yeti response. I dig it, go for it. Okay, I'm gonna reply in about 20 seconds. We're all striking out. I think we should give Renee's howl a try. Is your voice ready? Yeah. Yep, all right, uh, 10 seconds. Yeah, let her rip. It had some echo to it. Did it? Yeah, it did. Hey, 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 some howled. There it is again. Two. Did you hear that? I heard it. You guys hear that howl? Yeah, we just heard him, two of them, down in the valley. Someone imitated back. No, those are Sherpas walking with lights below us. Total bummer. I thought we had something. The fact that Sherpas are walking around in the middle of the night does not bode well for us. If we're gonna do any successful yetiing around here, we're gonna have to find a place with less Sherpas walking in the middle of the night down these trails. Hey, Bobo, do you copy? Yeah, what's going on, Matt? It's starting to rain on us. I want to make a beeline for the base camp. So let's just meet up there, and we'll make a plan for tomorrow. I was just telling Renee, I think tonight was just basically a recon mission. And a little uh, info for us to take on further in the search. Yeah, whatever. We're getting wet. Tell us later. <laughs> All right, let's get out of here, man. This way. 